Hello everybody, my name is Zen and we're going to talk about Baldur's Gate 3 because update number 4 has come out for early access. Now, if you didn't know and you're new to the channel or maybe you just kind of missed over it, I have done a pretty extensive playthrough of Baldur's Gate 3 and I'll put a link to it in the description and of course in the comments. So if you're interested in seeing what Baldur's Gate 3 is all about or maybe just watching somebody play through the content that is in early access, uh, then by all means, check that out. I should say it is a little bit old uh, because it was right when Early Access has, you know, first came out. And there's been a bunch of updates since. And the game is a little bit more stable, especially with this new update, which is what we're going to be talking about. I'm going to be going over all of the big changes. But most importantly, we're going to be talking about the new class that got added. Because I, for one, was not expecting them to add a new class, especially in Early Access. But they did. They added the druid to the game which is a huge surprise and i am super excited to see if they add any other classes like paladin i would really like a paladin because just in general in dungeons and dragons i think paladin is up there as one of my favorite classes um a little broken in fifth edition but but still up there with one of my favorite classes so when it comes to just dungeons and dragons in general there's a huge slew of classes right you've got like the the fighter and the ranger and the rogues and the wizards and sorcerers and warlocks and all of this stuff and and Baldur's Gate 3 had a pretty big chunk of them right it, for example you know you have the fighter but it tied mostly to being Lizelle which is like one of the main companion characters and in the final version of the game you're going to be able to play as one of those companion characters if you so choose this isn't something that's you know new to larian studios back with divinity original sin 2 they did something very similar uh, this is the most recent example so that's why i'm going straight to it but essentially you had these origin characters like losa for example and that could be a companion that you could go and recruit. But if you tried to play as Losa, you would actually gain a significant more amount of dialogue that you were able to interact with, you know, different characters. And you could go through Losa's story, but it's not a companion story. It's your own story. And you get to um, do things very specifically and you get to choose how your Losa plays. Well, that was a lot of fun, and they are taking it and bringing it to Baldur's Gate 3. So, like, Lizelle, who is tied to being a fighter, she doesn't have to be a fighter in the final game. It looks like you're going to be able to go through and change it up a bit. But, you know, don't don't uh, quote me on that because it is still early access at the moment. We know nothing about playing as those characters right now. Uh, that is just simply based on their previous experience with Divinity Original Sin. So... I think that when it comes to the classes they had, like the fighter or the rogue with uh, with Asterion or the cleric with Shadowheart, like they had a pretty nice roundup of different classes you could play, and they were all tied to different companion characters that you would be able to play in the final version. So for them to add a new class, it changes that up a bit because you're like, well, hold up a second. <laughs> Who's the companion that's a druid? Are we going to get a druid companion? Because that would be pretty cool. And if not, then that just means that everything is opened up to potential as, you know, classes to be added and playable in Baldur's Gate 3. Because the druid is like, uh, for one, it's a big undertaking. If you know nothing about the druid in D&D, &D, uh, it kind of works a little like the druid in World of Warcraft. Uh, I think that's a good way to put it. You can change into animals you can shape shift into animals uh but in dungeons and dragons and fifth edition in particular i'm mentioning that one because that's uh, what the rule set of baldur's gate 3 is based on you had a limited amount of times that you could transform into a creature the same goes for that in in Baldur's Gate 3. So you have, you know, your wild shape charges that you can utilize once per long rest. So uh, to start with in Baldur's Gate 3, you're getting two. Once you hit level two and, you know, you get your wild shape, you have two wild shapes that you can use per long rest, which is pretty cool. And the interesting thing that they've done 
is they've limited what you could turn into. So unlike in fifth edition Dungeons and Dragons, where it's like you can turn into any creature that is that, you know, that you've seen and is a beast and is of, you know, this challenge rating, like one challenge rating or one half challenge rating um, to start with. So it kind of limits or limits how powerful your wild shape can be. Right. But at the same time, what it's doing is it's limiting down the options. So you're not like, I'm going to turn into a Tyrannosaurus Rex at level two. So it, it balances it out naturally. Well, in Baldur's Gate 3, they they decided to just give you a set of things that you can turn into. So for example, you've got like a spider, uh, which obviously being being able to turn into a spider is pretty cool. You can you know climb up walls and everything. Um, they have a badger, which can burrow underground. You can turn into a cat and just straight up like sneak around like a non-combat cat. You don't have barely any HP as, as a cat, but you can sneak around, which is cool. You could turn into a bird. Um, I think the coolest one is specific to one of the different druid circles that you choose at level two, which is a polar bear. And the polar bear at level two starts with 30 health when you when you transform into a polar bear and it has a giant like aoe taunt so you can get a bunch of creatures around you or or enemies around you to attack you instead of your party members and it just does a crazy amount of damage the the wolf is also quite cool so um the wolf in D D you get like pack tactics which essentially allows you to uh, gain uh, chances to hit additional chance to hit if there is um you know a, a an ally within a certain amount of range of the enemy that you're attacking so let's say you're attacking an enemy because you're a wolf so you're in melee and you have an ally within five yards of you you're gaining you know a bonus through pack tactics that's how that works in fifth edition and in in Baldur's Gate 3, they've just given you buffs to give to your party so like you can increase their movement speed as a wolf, which is also quite cool. But like the druid in 5th edition D&D is limited to the challenge rating of things that you can turn into because they don't know what you're going to turn into and that they need to be able to balance it. You can't just turn into a crazy beast that is, you know, challenge rating 20 at level 1 because that that just it would be overpowered and broken. It doesn't work. But in 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 Baldur's Gate 3, they know what you're going to turn into because they give you those options. They haven't given you an, a crazy unlimited amount of options. Druid players from 5th edition may be a little disappointed in that. But the benefit of that is they can give you more powerful wild shapes right off the bat. So, you know, you if you choose, I think it's Circle of the Moon. I don't remember which one it is that gives you the... Uh, polar bear but you can like straight up just turn into a polar bear right off the bat and at level two think about this in in Baldur's gate three you're anywhere between like 11 and 15 health and to suddenly double your health pool and now you're a polar bear it's crazy and it's really cool but also as a druid you're not just turning into animals all the time you also have spells that you can use and they're really cool spells that you can utilize within Baldur's Gate 3 that that the other classes don't have access to but you've got things like um like cantrips like thorn whip which as a person who has played 5th edition and he tried to use thorn whip it sounds way cooler than it is in practice most of the time essentially it's a ranged attack you attack with a, a whip a thorn whip and it deals physical damage and then you pull them towards you you know you you pull them a certain amount towards you that sounds really cool but in actuality as a cantrip within fifth edition it just it it, it kind of is overshadowed by a bunch of other you know, obviously like you know level one spells or other cantrips in a lot of cases but what i have found is that in playing Baldur's gate three there is a lot of uses to thorn whip because in Baldur's Gate 3 they have designed the game to have a lot of verticality you know you have you have enemies that will try to seek higher ground to gain additional chances to hit at you or you know a higher chance to hit on you because they have high ground and if you're playing as a druid and you have thorn whip and the thing is within range you can whip it down off of a, a ledge and get it to get stunned and take a bunch of falling damage. 
And it is incredibly cool that that is even an option. And what I have found is that in playing the Druid so far in early access, Thorn Whip is a little overpowered. I had done this combo, well, that I thought I was going to do a combo, where I do Thorn Whip to pull things to me, and then I do the Ray of Sickness because it's, you know, within um, melee or poison spray is what it is. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a melee attack. But what I found was that poison spray more often than not was resisting. So why even do that when I could just thorn whip them again and do a pretty significant amount of damage through that? So in general, the, the druid has felt really powerful. <laughs> and on top of that, you know, you're getting things like heals. So you don't necessarily need a cleric in your group. You can bring a druid. Um, you can specialize more in spellcasting if you really want to, instead of doing a bunch of shape-shifting stuff. But if you do go to the shape-shifting route, you are able to expend uh, your spell slots that you do have while you're shape-shift to heal yourself. And that's really powerful because now you can be a polar bear that also heals yourself. It's really quite good. Um, I feel like, at least in the early stages of the game... The, the druid really holds its own like a lot <laughs> and is really a lot of fun to play. So this this brings up an interesting conundrum. If you have been following my Baldur's Gate stuff uh, as far as, you know, any of the videos that I've put up playing through it or any of the update videos of like, here's the new stuff that has been added, you'll know that I'm currently debating what the heck I'm going to play when the game actually launches, launches rather and we do a full playthrough from start to finish and i was i was leaning cleric i was like cleric is really cool it's super powerful it's a lot of fun to play but now that the druid has come out i'm like i don't know the druid is really good it's a lot of fun i don't want to play it just because it is kind of overpowered it's just a lot of fun to have the options that the druid has and then it gets me thinking like well what else are they going to add are they going to add the paladin will they add a barbarian you know what a barbarian would be a lot of fun to play in Baldur's Gate 3 if they decided to add it. Even though they already have a fighter and the fighter is, you know, kind of already a melee class that could fulfill the same role as a barbarian, the barbarian has its own unique cool stuff too. So it's just, um, it's interesting to be in this conundrum of I still... I, for one, I don't know what I'm going to play when the game actually launches. And on top of that, I feel like... Um, I feel like I, I really want to play the Druid because it's cool, but if they add new stuff, is that going to change my opinion? I don't know. We'll, we'll have to see. I'll probably end up playing a little bit more um, of the Druid and, and feeling it out quite a bit more to see if it's more up my alley than the other classes. But so far, I highly recommend it. If you picked up Baldur's Gate 3 in early access and your save was erased because of you know updating the game to the, one of the new updates which happens, it's normal, um, then it is it is worth it to go back and check out the Druid just because it's a lot of fun. But the Druid wasn't the only thing added in patch 4, so I want to talk about some of the other things. So I think the biggest change that people are going to notice for people who have either seen people play Baldur's Gate 3 in early access or if you've played it yourself is that the, the cinematics look a lot better, the in-game cinematics, where... You know, for example, the, the Nautiloid ship right at the beginning of the game when it's doing its crashing thing or like the moment that you start and there's a big pool in front of you and you can go click on it and be like, what is this? Uh, the cinematics for that stuff was kind of janky. Actually, let's not kid ourselves. They were really janky and they didn't look great, especially considering you look at the rest of the game and it looks fantastic. This is a good looking game. The engine that they've built for works really, really well. And so far, um, I'm able to run the game in 4K over 60 FPS. And that is, that's awesome. And I'm, I'm enjoying it quite a bit because, again, how good it looks. Now, I, I am uploading this video in 1440p as I do with my Baldur's Gate things. So even if you don't have a 1440p monitor or above, make sure you select it in the options because it just looks better on YouTube in general. But they massively updated like the the graphical fidelity of those cinematics and it in my opinion it doesn't take you out of the experience anymore and it it helps to immerse you into the game. 
Here's another interesting choice that they've decided to go with, and it is optional. You can change it, which is that um, dice rolls can be weighted to avoid really bad streaks of like success or failure. So you're not going to roll like four ones in a row. And if you've watched my series, you know I don't roll well. <laughs> it happens often where I'll roll really, really bad over and over and over again. Well, they've weighted it so that doesn't necessarily happen because they know that it is not fun to be like, I rolled a one, I rolled a one, I rolled a one. Or it's it's also not fun to roll like five 20s in a row, right? This is an optional thing. You can turn it off. And I think when I do my full playthrough, I will turn it off because I do like the the unpredictability of an actual random system like what am i going to get out of this if i roll four ones in a row it's unlikely that i'll do that but it is possible because that is how randomness works right i i have a a five percent chance to get any number on a d20 and i i will likely get some of those numbers over and over again if it is truly a random system the interface has been updated quite a bit, so like tooltips look really nice. Um, when you go to loot things, the little loot pop-up looks really nice. Uh, the main menu and profile menu have been updated. There are uh, there's a, there's a new interface for death saving throws, which is cool. And then any kind of notification that pops up has also been improved. But in doing so, they've also improved the performance of the UI, so it works out you know, pretty well that it looks better and it runs better. And that's always a good thing. I think one of the funniest changes that I saw in the patch notes, patch notes rather, is that the flaming fists, which is a, it's a faction. They now actually have a, a fist on their shield <laughs> because, you know, otherwise you wouldn't know who they are. They're just random people. And I think that's pretty cool. They fixed an issue that I had in our playthrough, like over and over, which is that, uh, trading and bartering prices were unclear. Well, now they show both the original value of an item and the adjusted price within the tooltips, which is really nice as someone who likes to pick up a lot of crap and sell it. And now I can actually see what kind of value I'm getting out of certain things on different vendors or like, you know, how much the vendor likes me or how much money they have in the first place, which is pretty nice. Um, long rest. Here's an interesting one because this has happened to me a couple times where it got kind of annoying. Long rest is now applied to all recruited characters, not just current party members, which, um, is such a niche issue to have where you long rest, but the, one of the characters that you had didn't long rest because you, you swapped him out for a different party member and then you swapped it back and then they didn't have their spell slots and stuff. But it was just... It was really stupid, but that has been updated. Uh, multiplayer stuff has been updated. I think that that is really important because I plan on playing this in multiplayer, not for the playthrough, but just in general. And in addition to adding the druids, they've also changed how some of the combat encounters work because druid NPCs are now druids. They're not just you know, characters that you know, like mages that have happened to have specific druidy abilities no they are straight up they're, you know they're druids they are built as if they were the druid class which is really nice it means that uh combat encounters with the druids grove in act one completely have been changed and rebalanced because all of those abilities now reflect the fact that they are actually druids but in addition to being a druid yourself there's a bunch of new multiple dialogue choices of you know you're, you're talking to someone and it's maybe something about nature or a druid's grove or healing and something like that and you can now have druid options that reflect that which is really nice so it, you know again if you've played through early access it gives you reasons to go back and play through because you're gonna get a little bit different experience out of that whether it be through just you know combat encounters because those are new or also through the encounters of of dialogue and there's a thing that was added that i haven't been able to test out yet but apparently if you go through the um the story through the druids grove and everything it's possible to get really powerful new magic items and become a faith warden of the drove of the grove and basically become like their hero. And I think that's really fun. 
Um, there's also a bunch of new options in talking to creatures because you can talk to them while you're wild shaped. So druids are pretty powerful for um, both dialogue stuff, being able to figure things out through um, through talking to different animals, different people, and on top of actually being pretty good in combat as well. There's also countless bug fixes and balance changes and a bunch of other stuff that I'm not going to go over. I encourage you to go look at the patch notes if you're really interested in that stuff. But in general, you should just know that the game is a little bit more balanced. Things that were broken as far as balance aren't that broken anymore. But in general, the druid is really cool and totally worth trying out. Um, you could play a druid with any of the classes or rather any of the uh, races in the game, which is nice so you could be a halfling druid if you really wanted to or you know a dwarf druid like all these are options for you but in general the druid is cool the new cinematic and graphical changes are cool and just the random quality of life things that they've done here and there make the game a lot more playable and i'm getting really excited for the full playthrough of this game like i'm don't get me wrong i am gonna do a full playthrough and i'm really really excited for it I'm just kind of scared because I don't know what I'm going to play. There's so many cool choices now. It's Right now it's between a cleric, a rogue, and a druid. But if they add a paladin, I'm going to be honest, it's going to be hard to resist that. Because for me, I really like the paladin class in 5th edition. Anyways, if you have jumped in to Baldur's Gate 3 with patch 4 and you've tried out the druid, let me know what you think in the comments because I'm really curious what your guys' thoughts are about all this or what your thoughts are of the druid in general, even if you haven't jumped in and been able to try it out. Are you going to pick up Baldur's Gate 3 in early access or are you going to wait for it to fully launch? Personally, I think it's good either way. I don't think there's really any benefit to picking it up early, but uh, if you really want to jump in and try it out, then it's absolutely worth it because there is a bunch of content there to get. So it's you know one way or another, in my opinion. But with all of that being said, thank you guys for watching and we shall see you guys next time.